the final theme I want to give you is experiential knowledge. And this has huge applications when we fold it back into Christianity. Kierkegaard's basically saying you only capital K know what you have personally experienced. All other types of knowledge is hearsay or based on someone else's experiences, like you read someone else's book or something. So for example, I may have the best cookbooks on my shelf and I may have read them all. I could write reports on them, but until I actually bake the muffins or the brownies, I do not really experientially know what it's like to cook muffins or brownies. Okay. I can read all the literature on um, heroin addiction and being a junkie and that kind of lifestyle. But until I actually shoot up and enter that path, I will not experientially understand what it's like to be a junkie. Right. Not that I want to, but, and I'm sure that's part of your counseling 101 is that you never tell your clients, I know exactly how you feel because that's absolute nonsense. Of course, you don't know how they feel. Even if you're an empath, you can come alongside them you can sympathize with them, you can even share their struggles, but they are a unique human being. And you might say, no, Blackburn, they just lost their child. I lost a child a couple of years ago. I know what it's like to lose a child. You know what it's like to lose your child. You do know, not know what it's like for them to lose their child. They are a unique, special individual, and it's going to affect them differently. And so this all stems out of this existential philosophy of radical freedom, becoming an authentic self. And Kierkegaard believed the only way we could become an authentic self was having the very spirit of God within us, quickening us, making us a new creation, 